Well, hi everyone, and a warm welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got two fabulous new products I want to show you today. Uh, I'll start off by letting you know that I've bought these. They've not been gifted to us in any way. Uh, kicking off with the Dometic Sunshine Air Pro 400. We wanted a new uh, sunshine canopy for the caravan, and this is a choice. Previously known as Camper, uh, so Camper or Dometic. And also to go with it, the side wall set as an additional uh, accessory. So we'll start off here by actually unpacking the sunshine canopy itself. It comes, as you can imagine, nice and neat uh, when you open it for the first time. You can never quite get these wrapped up and put back, I find, as you took them out. But let's have a look and see what we've got in here. First thing to say is no weight in this whatsoever, really quite light. Got a brand new pump here uh, for pumping the uh, sunshine canopy up. I've already got a couple of those, so I'll be keeping that as a new spare. And also a bag of tricks in terms of some um, guy ropes and some pegs and stuff in that bag there. And then we've got the actual canopy itself. Now when you open this up for the first time, as you'll see, it's uh, got tissue and uh, packing paper and all sorts in here. So I'm just going to remove all of that. And then what we've got going on really is we've got a central beam, which you can see there. And then we've got two side wall pillars. And just like uh, any other awning really, uh, you just need to sort of take this over to the caravan and offer it up to the awning rail. So let's get that over there now. If you haven't worked out already, by the way, I'm doing a voice over here because the mic, when I recorded this video, but, uh, wasn't really plugged in properly. So I couldn't quite uh, really put this one on without doing a voiceover. So super quick time, not, not a bore you, but my awning rail's a little bit tight, I find. Probably needs a clean out or a bit of WD-40 in it. So I'm just speeding this little bit up here and then um, thread that through just like you would do your awning. And every now and again, I just have to go to the side and give it a, a little bit of a pull from the other side just to help it go through. I find it helps if you're tall. I am six foot two. Uh, if, you, if you're short, you might need some steps here just to get this. And then just to get it into position, really, um, I want to get this positioned really as close to the lounge window as possible, sort of between the caravan door and the lounge window. So that means that when we come out, we have got a little bit of uh, protection over the door, which is what we want. You don't want to walk outside of the canopy anyway. And then just to pull this out here, this is three meters uh, wide from the caravan. So from the caravan to the edge is three meters, but the width from sort of left to right, as you look at the screen, that's 400 uh, mils or four meters. 400 centimeters or four meters, let's get it right. So what you've got on this um, right hand pillar here is the valve that you need to just take the dust cap off. This is for pumping up. It's got a, uh, uh, a non-release valve, I think they call it. So you can only, you won't let air out if you accidentally open it. Here's the air pump that I already have. So I wanna just keep using this one for now. So I'll use the new one as a spare because I use that on the air awning itself. And then quite simply, just over on this right canopy, just pl literally plug that in really. Push that in the hole and then get ready to try and lose some weight <laughs> and start doing some pumping. Uh, it actually isn't as bad as pumping up the air awning. Uh, probably did this in less than two minutes. Just to make sure that on the left hand pillar you've closed uh, the release valve because you can let the air out from the other pillar. So just make sure that valve's closed before you start pumping and there you go. Like uh, In no time at all we've got the uh, air awning, I keep calling it an air awning, we've got the sun canopy up and it's just a case now of putting the dust cover back on. And you know, it's pretty much job done really. All we've got to do now is just start to stake out the guy ropes and these uh, what I call storm straps. These are the same straps that I get with the camper awning that we have, which is, a, I think it's called a 390. You'll notice that the, I mentioned the width of this is four meters. You've got a strap that runs across the bottom here. Like, can you see the, the black strap on the floor? Um, you just gotta make sure you've got that taut because you know when that's taut, you've got the right distance between the two pillars. So important just to get that bit right. And as I mentioned from the back of the caravan, across that central beam to the front, that's three meters, so it's four by three. This is me just doing a little bit of exercise with a hammer in my hand, thinking that might help me lose a bit of weight, but I'm just pointing out the fact that uh, you've got to get that strap taut. So the next job really, you can adjust these straps as required, and I just want to stake these out. Now, we're on hard ground today, so I'm, I'm actually not going to use the plastic that stakes that came with it. 
plastic pegs. Um, I've got some sort of pegs that I would normally use if I was on a hard standing pitch. And with the ground being so hard, that just makes it a lot easier to get in. So it's just a case of tacking that one down. No time at all. As I say, if you need to adjust, there's a strap there on the side. If you want to go tighter or make that a bit longer, just give you a bit more length than you can do. And there you go. By the way, if you're wondering where we are filming this, we're actually at Deer's Glade in Norfolk. Great little campsite. Worth a visit if you've never been. Handy for Cromer and Sheringham and Fellbrig, which is a National Trust house just up the road. So now over to the left hand um, strap there. And again, just tacking that one down. And that's giving you stability from the top. So now I'm just gonna go and do the same with these guy ropes. I've got that distance that I wanted. That, that bottom strap now from left to right is nice and taut and straight. So just adjust your guy ropes as you need them to be. And again, at the side, just tack those in. I'm surprised I can get down as well as that. Getting down wasn't too bad. It was getting back up that was more of a problem for me. I don't know if it's my age or my weight. Helen thinks it's both. Helen's just piping in in the background there, she's saying wait. She would know. <laughs> right, over to the other side now and just do the same again with this guy rope over here. Actually, it was a lovely day. It was, uh, I think it was about 20 degrees. The pitch that we've got is facing a lake We've got no one to our left, no one to our right, just a couple of vans behind. So it's a really lovely private spot. I'm doing a separate video on Deer's Glade, so look out for that coming up in the next sort of few days. And we'll give you a guided tour of the whole site. So there you go. It's kind of in real time, so you can see now just how long it's taken to do this. Only a few minutes. And one thing I can say for sure is, uh, the first time you put this up will probably be the longest it ever takes you because you've got the unpacking for the first time so you've got a few bits and pieces you want to get out of the way but honestly once you get going nice and easy the skirt that you can see at the bottom there i'm just pointing out uh, that's uh, one that i've got it's nothing to do with the actual set itself and the ground sheet is ours as well that doesn't come with it that, that's separate so nice and easy um, on a day like today you probably wouldn't need the side walls up but I've got to give you a demo of those and just how they work as well. So they came in a separate bag. They're a separate accessory. We paid £425, I think it was, for the canopy. And then this sidewall set here was a further £199. So, you know, I actually think it's not cheap, but I do believe it's quality. Camper gear, we've got a camper windbreak. We've also got um, a camper air awning and now this. And one thing I will say, I, I think they're robust, they're strong, and uh, they're gonna last a long time. So it's probably a good investment. So what have we got in this bag? Just to undo these couple of straps here, and we'll show you. This is nice and simple, and again, nice and lightweight. So if you're used to carrying an awning around, there's less weight in these two packs than there would be in your average awning. So in this little bag of tricks here that I'm opening up, you've got uh, some important items. Uh, I don't know what you call these little tie bungee strap things. Um, I think that's what they're called, bungee straps. So they obviously get, they go on the bottom of the side walls when it's time to put those out. Uh, and then you've got this nifty little uh, bracket that comes, which some of you might be familiar with, but I've never seen these before. Um, I'll show you in a second in more detail how these work, but they just fasten um, to the bead that runs along the top of the canopy right by the awning rail. You then got in this bag I'm just opening now two adjustable poles. Again very lightweight aluminium. So they're sort of snap poles which are then spring loaded and then you've got a little um, bracket on the side so you can adjust there like that. And these are going to run from the top of the pillars up to the top of your caravan by the awning rail at a moment or two. 
and they work very much like a um, curtain or shower rail, as you'll see in a second or two. So there's the second pole. Identical poles, you haven't got left or right, so it doesn't matter which way around you, you put these up. And then the final thing that we've got going on in this bag are the actual side walls themselves. Just to save you a bit of time when you unpack these, um, or when it's time to put these up, you just need to work out two very obvious things once you know. Well, I'll tell you about that in a second, because I just want to show you this clip in a bit more detail. As I say, you might be familiar with these, but this has got like an adjustable thread. And what it, it opens up like a clamp, as I'm just holding up here. And you can see that sort of round shape there. And you close that together on the bead at the top of the caravan. And once you've got it in the position that you want it, you just tighten up this little um, thread here, it's like a little plastic nut. And that tightens that clamp set against the, uh, the bead on the caravan. The good thing is you've got this nice sort of rubber, um, I don't know what you call it, little uh, foot or something on the end of the clamp and that protects uh, your caravan. So your caravan's not going to get um, damaged from the pole when you put it up. And the little hole there, there's a hook on the end of the pole, which you just put in once that's up and then you, you just twist the pole and it's locked in position. It's an ingenious piece of kit and so simple. So let's get on with it. I'm just going to put those two clamps in position there. I think Helen might be right, I probably could do with losing a little bit of weight looking at this picture. Oh, she's there again, she's just in the back. I'm actually sat outside the caravan doing this voiceover. Helen's inside with a big smirk on her face. Uh, those are my Richie Richie underpants that I've got on that I wanted to show you all. I know what you girls are thinking right now. Not only is he drop dead gorgeous, but he wears really sexy underwear. <laughs> right, I'm going to take you a little bit closer to see how these poles go on. So this first pole I've got already connected here. Just slots onto this little plastic bracket. I'm pointing out the fact that it's adjustable and once you've got it nice and tight and in position, you just close the clamp and that locks it in place. And then on this side, um, I just wanted to try and demonstrate me putting the pole on here while I'm moulding the camera, which is not easy, but hopefully you'll just get an idea how simple this is. So just putting the pole up now, as Helen makes loads of clattering noise in the background, and then, yeah, that just pushes up to there. And although it's just out of camera, I'm just closing the clamp now because I've got it nice and tight as I want it. And that's the um, second rail ready now to receive the side wall. I'll just show you as we go back towards the back of the caravan that magic clamp I was talking about. So that's really nice and tight and it's not going to damage the caravan in any way and it's attached to the bead at the top of the uh, canopy. So we're now getting ready to put these walls on. Now, like I say, they're easy to put up. You just gotta make sure you get them the right way around. So they've got some plastic clips on, a little bit like a, a shower curtain, like I mentioned, but you clip them from the outside towards the inside. So that's the first thing to say. And also uh, where I'm standing now, that side of the wall is obviously longer because it's higher. So you just need to make sure that you put it on the right way round with the long bit by the caravan. And then as you start to clip these little plastic clips on, they just slot on ever so easy, like a little spring clip. And as you get nearer to the front, then you've got the, uh, the shorter piece, if you like. Now there are two uh, little safety straps here. So I'm just connecting these little green straps up. And I think I could do a little close up there. There we go. So should that come undone for any reason, it's still attached to the canopy and the pole. It's not going to blow away anywhere. And it's the same on the side. There's a little hook at the top next to that magic clamp that I was talking about. So it literally hangs like a curtain, the side wall. And what needs to happen next is it needs to be fastened down. So these are the pegs that come with it, the sort of traditional camper or Dometic plastic pegs. And then these little metal um, pegs as well can be used on the um, sort of 
guy ropes if you like but as I mentioned the ground was so hard I decided I would just use some of the tougher pegs that I've already got that I would normally put on a hard standing. Now you might be able to put these up a little bit neater than I have but there's a, a little piece at the bottom which I always fold under I'll try and fold under to the inside to keep uh, any water out should it rain but literally that's it up folks now you might say oh there's a gap at the top but there is supposed to be a gap at the top this is not an awning it's a sudden canopy the only reason you would put that up is to either try and protect yourself from a little bit of the wind so there's a little wind break or potentially from any sunshine um, I don't know if it's getting particularly hot what we found straight away is this is much higher than the uh, air awning that we've got so it's a much taller roof. I absolutely love the sort of open arch front that it has. So you, even when I'm sat inside it, which I'm actually sat inside it now doing this little commentary, uh, you do feel that you're outside, but you also feel protected from the weather. So that wasn't too bad overall, was it? It's quite good actually. I was really pleased with it. Um, obviously it's going to take a bit longer first time you do it because you've got more to unpack. But I, uh, I actually got the the sun canopy up probably in about 10 minutes if that and then about another 10 minutes to put the side walls on I think if I was doing it again I could probably do it in half the time we did try with the with the camper awning we have yeah um, with the three sections at the front but it just wasn't high enough you didn't have the roof space you have in here did you no I mean it's a great awning um, but when we took all the sides off I thought that'll do as a sun canopy just wasn't as you say, you didn't have the height. It wasn't quite right, no. no. And one thing I do like about this is you don't you don't get as many flies in here and wasps and things as they've got a big area to come in and out. So you yeah. aren't pestered with them and they aren't shut in. Yeah. So that's pretty good. I thought it might be worse actually, but it's better. Definitely better. And we're right next to a lake at the moment, so there's loads of flies and uh, little midges and things mm. about. But no, nothing in here. So. Well, I've seen on YouTube that... Um, I've seen this actual Sunshine Air Pro in a storm with gusts of up to 60 miles an hour withstanding it well. It's got a couple of mm. storm straps on there. It's got the uh, the guy ropes at the side as well. So overall, I think it should be fine. Also, I think with the side panels, because you can buy it without the side panels, they're optional extra. Mm. Um, they do keep the wind and the breeze off you. So oh, yeah. yeah. You good know, that good, good for night time. Yeah. I sat out here uh, last night actually and it was fine. Um, so I think that about wraps it up. Thank you mm -hmm. if you have been for watching the video. If you're yet to subscribe to the channel now is a good time to do it. Just hit that subscribe button right now. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and hit the notification bell and then you'll get to see me and Helen on a more regular basis. Oh. Which I'm sure <laughs> will make your life vastly improved. <laughs> so until the next time it's a big thank you and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.